Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Chrome Soft Golf Ball from Callaway. And hello again, I'm Rich Lerner. What a Saturday at the Arnold Palmer Invitational here at Bay Hill. Uh, outside of Tiger Woods getting well, I can't think of anything that fans in this sport want to see more than Jordan Spieth winning. And yet again, for the third time in 2021, he'll have a crack at it going to Sunday. Uh, for the first two hours, it may have been the most mind-blowing Saturday since Tiger's Two Eagle Tour de Force at Torrey Pines at the U.S. Open of 08 or uh, yeah, since Jordan's Saturday in Scottsdale last month when he shot 61. He made a hole-in-one at the second. An incredible par after hitting it in the water at number three. Hold out of a bunker at number seven. He was six under through 12. Two bogeys coming in. 68 still. He's only two shots back going to the final round. Here now is Jordan Speed. I hit a five iron. It's 205 front, 220 hole. And uh, the wind wasn't blowing very hard, so I was trying to trying to peel it left to right to hold the wind and landed a little right of the hole. I hit it a little thin, um, but it was right on the line I wanted. And knowing that the grass was wet, you know, you get some skid. I thought in the air it was going to be pretty good. Certainly not as good as it was, but um, I just wanted kind of one hop, you know, because I just miss hit it slightly. And um, a lot of times those are the ones that that happens. You know, your perfect shots don't go in, but then sometimes the ones where uh, you know, the unexpected. So, uh, so that was cool. I mean, that was obviously a really cool moment. And then I'm curious, when you have to play, I think it was 15 holes by yourself, do you try to slow down or do you kind of just accept that you're going to have to wait all day? The pace was really, really good for a while until we got into, you know, kind of the middle of the back nine. I want to say like 12. Uh, we started to, you know, I started to kind of catch up. And then I think it really, um, I, I've never been in this situation before, so I didn't really know what to do. But um, it's kind of hard to, when you when you to get to a spot and wait a long time. So I probably should have walked a little slower. And um, really, as I got through kind of 14, 15, 16, 17 there, and I did on 16. I, I really started to. But I mean, I had 40 feet every hole and just took my time because you know these guys were um, you know it was a little took a little longer when you have 40 feet every hole. I must have had 12 putts from the exact same putt, 40 feet, broke two feet right to left, goes uphill and then flat at the hole. I mean, it was just bizarre. I was starting to get so annoyed and frustrated with having that, but, and then I missed the green and I wish that I had it on 17. So it was just, um, it was a new situation. I kind of tried to walk slower in certain times, but there's only so much you could do, yeah. It seemed to us watching is kind of a crazy day. You know, you had the aces, yeah. you had Bryson going for on six. Inside of the arena, did it seem crazy to you? Just all that was going on? Yeah, it was another just another round that unfortunately wasn't boring for me. I mean, I'm trying to have boring rounds, and um, I today was uh, if I felt better on leaving the range than I did yesterday on the range, but I hit it a lot worse today than I did yesterday. Outside of um, obviously the one shot that was a couple shots on number two but um, man I just after that drive on two I I was so pumped up and just so much I just was having a really hard time controlling the ball and uh, luckily made some putts to make up for that but I, it was almost like uh, it was almost like kind of that first shot at the Ryder Cup kind of feeling where you're just so amped up that you have to hit so many controlled shots here and when it gets a little windy it's so hard to hit the fairways and I really struggle on the front nine with that and uh, you know, I, I would hold bunker shot again, but I mean, I parred both the par fives. You hit those fairways, they're reachable and they're birdie holes. And um, so looking back, you know, as you know, I would have signed up for four under to start the day, but uh, it was a, it was an odd one. All right, so again, he is two shots back and tied for fourth at the Waste Management Phoenix Open. He was tied for the lead through 54 holes, shot 72 the final day. Two back of Brooks Kepkin tied for fourth at Pebble Beach through 54 holes. He was the solo leader, shot 71 on Sunday and finished tied for third. Three back of Daniel Berger, hoping he can come from behind on Sunday. One shot back is Bryson DeChambeau, 68, but I promise you that all anybody's talking about is the sixth hole. He lined up and you thought he's not really going to do it. He talked about it all week. and We thought maybe it was a publicity stunt. No, he took dead aim. He missed just a little bit right in the rough, but he hit it 370, had 70 yards in, just carried the length of that lake, made birdie on that hole. 
and he shoots a 68, so he's at 10 under par right in the thick of it. But again, uh, it's all about that par five sixth, and here he is with Steve Burkowski. For the third straight day, we get to ask Bryson about the sixth hole, and this day we're looking forward to the answer. What was the process like leaving five green to ultimately hitting that shot? Well, I had a lot more people uh, edging me on because they knew it was uh, about 10, 10 miles an hour downwind, and, and I, that's what I was saying. And sure enough, I was uh, uh, gutsy enough to get up there and hit a really good drive that uh, flew, flew exactly where I wanted it to. And I uh, wish it would have drew a little bit more because I think I had uh, the distance to get to the green. But at the same point in time, it was a tough pin. I, I made a great birdie on that hole. And, it was definitely fun reacting that way, just trying to get the crowd pumped up in that manner. Where did that reaction come from? Literally from, I don't know, it came just a random, I don't know, just came out of me. And it was, it was fun to be able to react that way. It was almost like a happy Gilmore sort of thing. Like, come on, let's go, you know, a reaction. I don't know. It was just something that that's, that's who I am. You talked about it all week, but what did it actually take for you to try to pull it off, considering you, you were one shot off the lead at the time? Yeah, I mean... I knew that if I didn't hit it that great, it would still be able to get over even with the wind pumping 10 miles an hour downwind. So I wasn't anticipating anything other than just got to swing it hard enough to get it over the, the water. And uh, again, like I said, if it's 10 miles an hour downwind, I can definitely clear it. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll put it a little closer to the green tomorrow. We don't know. But uh, the wind's got to be right. Conditions have to be right. Big picture. You're in the mix in this tournament. Yeah. Uh, what improved from yesterday? You told me things were a little bit off. Didn't seem to be the case today. Yeah, th there was uh, a couple drives that didn't go exactly where I wanted to uh, today. Kind of weird, but I just felt like my golf swing was a little, little bit better placed. My irons were, were uh, a lot better. And I, I have to note that. My wedges were a little bit tighter. Still got to work on it. Uh, I'm going to be working hard to be comfortable for tomorrow. What's the most important thing you need to do in the final round? I would say iron play has got to be premier and, and driving has got to be premier. I know my putting is good enough to, to win out here. Uh, iron play and driving has to be a key for me tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Bryson. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Bryson is one back of Lee Westwood on top of the leaderboard, 65, his lowest in 49 rounds going back to 1998 here at Bay Hill, 47 years young. He's won 25 times in Europe. First was in 1996, 25 years ago. He's been doing it at a high level for a long time, looking for his third win on the PGA Tour. Lee Westwood with Steve Burkowski. Saturday, 65, finished off in style with that long birdie at the last. How'd this one come together for you today, Lee? Uh, well, I, I just played really well. You know, I played solidly from the start, hit a lot of fairways, hit it close quite a lot, gave myself a lot of looks for birdie, and... Uh, and rolled it nicely on the greens. A couple of three putts around the back nine, but, gen you know, in general, uh, rolled it on the line that I'd picked out at a good speed. Um, so just really pleased with the, with the way I played, and uh, I felt comfortable out there. How did this course maybe play differently considering a little bit of rain and chillier conditions? Um, yeah, it didn't soften the greens at all, um, but uh, obviously ball in hand makes it a little bit easier. Um, you know, you're guaranteed a clean ball. Um, but it, I, th I felt like there were some tricky shots out there, some you know, some tee shots and second shots that you really had to, you know, hit hit good shots and you know, strike the ball really well, well, and you know, have good distance control. What do you look forward to the challenge of winning again on the PGA Tour tomorrow? Just being in contention. You know, I'm, I'm 48 next month, so uh, you know, I'm just enjoying uh, you know coming, still coming out and can, competing in these big events. You know, I've, it's got to be top 50 in the world to get in these events. Um, like this and, and uh, players next week so uh, and the Masters so you know it shows I'm still capable of playing good golf consistently and um, you know to be in contention tomorrow's an added bonus could be a memorable Sunday at Bay Hill